Hi, I'm Mark Logan and welcome to Photo Training for You and I'm joined again by Carlton G from uh, Mitsubishi Electric. Welcome back. Thank you. It's the same day really as the other yeah. films, but <laughs> it's back to when these kind of, anyway, you know what I'm on about. Um, the last film that we made was kind of looking at the different styles of projectors and kind of we went away from everything from kind of the budget one that we're going to look at now again in a minute, going right through kind of to the expensive ranges and so on. And in this film, we're predominantly looking at throw size and kind of what image we can get for our money as much as anything, isn't yes. it? You know? Yeah. So what's the two different models that we've got here? Okay, uh, EX240, yep. which is a standard throw projector. That, that, that was our budget one. That was the budget one, yes. Right, and we really should have the wide... Um, screen version of that though, yes. actually running what we're doing. Yes, yeah, so the widescreen version is an EW270, so it is essentially the same product but it just it shows a widescreen resolution rather than a 4 by 3 That's because my laptop that's feeding these it's is a widescreen wide image. Screen image. Yes. Uh, is that the standard kind of laptop now anyway as far as yes. the feed's concerned? Yeah. Uh, some of the old school laptops were 4 by 3 now you cannot buy a 4 by 3 laptop, everything now is, is widescreen. Why would we want to buy 4 uh, four by 3 projectors at all then? Um, 4x3 projectors, uh, a lot of things like PowerPoint and things like that are still done in a 4x3 ratio. Okay. But essentially, it's just now the migration into widescreen. This does have play a, a big part because obviously the screens can be expensive, uh, interactive whiteboards, various different things can still be 4x3. And some people prefer to buy a 4x3 projector to go with their 4x3 screen. But essentially, then you're, fo you're force feeding your laptop to show a 4x3 ratio. Yep. So it's trying to get them all linked in together so you've got uh, a widescreen image, a widescreen projector, and a widescreen screen. Cool. But the image that we're seeing thrown at pre present, in fact, is from is this one, isn't from it? From this one, which is widescreen, yes. Which, which model is this one? Uh, this is the EW230ST. So the ST right. bit is the short throw. Um, this is uh, a unit that I bought a couple of years ago now, isn't it? So yep. has it been updated at all? No, nope, still current. Yep. yep, still latest technology. Uh, just, just for a minute, I know they're kind of ready to play three, three, the 3D as such. What does that mean? Um, essentially with the 3D, obviously we all know it now from the cinemas, yeah. um, so long as you've got a 3D graphics card, 3D glasses, 3D software, 3D content, then obviously the projector is enabling it to then show 3D, so obviously you do get, you know, you can watch 3D videos. Okay. But at the moment we're still very lacking in uh, the amount of software and the, the, the product that's out there that's showing 3D. Brilliant. Uh, we've chosen these two projectors, um, not just because one was mine <laughs> and the other one's a budget one, but really to show the big difference in this, isn't it? Because yeah. um, I've just kind of put, put this very qu quickly to pretty much fill my screen and I'm working. I've lost the tape, tape measure, in fact. Have you got the tape measure there? There it is. That's it. We won't cut that out. That'll be good. Um, we're working in a, dis a distant wise away from the... Um, projector lens itself at about four, four feet. Yep. Yeah, and at four feet, that is pretty much giving me uh, close to a full-on screen of, what, 60... It's 89 across, because that's the edge-to-edge, -edge, if it was, of course. Um, but on the image size, we're looking at 82 inches. So that's a massive um, kind of throw, and that's because of this wide-angle yeah, lens that we've got it's on because here. because of the widescreen lens, yeah, and the, the wide-angle lens, the fisheye lens on it. And, and this projector is the same as the other projector. We haven't got the other word projector on yet. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's blank on here. <laughs> That's because the other projector is just set on the, uh, the blank mode, not to show its screen. But physically, they are the same projector. Essentially, they're, the sa they're exactly the same brightness, the same projector. Obviously, we can see they're the same chassis. It's just physically the lens technology that is different. This is 2,500 lumens, yeah? Yeah. And that one's the same? Same, is yeah. It two, two, Sorry, two, two, six, two, five. Two, six, so, two, five. So a little bit different. So, yeah, okay. Um, but when we kind of, let's, we're going to work on a, a kind of a, a standardization for what kind of a photographer might be selling to a client. So we're looking at a 50 inch. So we're not going to be anywhere near as big as this. Yeah. One of the benefits I've got with the wide angle and why I love it so, so much is that you can just pretty much kind of shrink, shrink it down um, within a very short setup time. Yes. So obviously change it. A zoom would be very similar, but there's no zoom on there's this. There's no zoom on that. It is where you put it gives you And we're just going to give ourselves an image. So that's uh, 52 inches. Let's bring that forward a little bit. And we're 50 inches. Bang, uh, bang on. So, and all we've moved that is around about a foot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it amazes me. Yes. So uh, the, I the idea behind it is literally, to, uh, it's a space saving. So, you know, similar to, um, to various things in life, obviously you've just got physically... Um, a, a zoom ratio 
that enables you to bring it closer to the screen, but because of the fish eye, you get in a bigger image. Now, when we switch the other one on a minute, or go from blank on that one, I should say, um, what's going to ha happen? Is it going to look the same intensity as the, the close project uh, projector, or is the um, kind of ambient light or studio light, light in here going to really change things? Yeah, it will. Uh, obviously, the big, the big thing is on the brightness, is the closer that you can get to the screen, the brighter it makes the image. So you probably noticed that when we moved it from there to there, it's raised the light levels just slightly higher. Yep. And it's because of the amount of ambient light that's in between your lens. So again, if we kind of moved it back a bit, you'll see that the image goes slightly darker. Yep. If we move it forward again, which is that's about your 50, it's, it suddenly becomes brighter. And it's literally just down to the ambient light. So if you've got a lot of um, sunlight coming through, the further you take back the projector, Certainly on this one, because it's not got zoom, it gives you more, um, a bigger image. But you're stretching the pixels, which the, obviously the image is made up of lots of pixels, so you're stretching those, and that makes it duller. But also the ambient light also drops the light level. So the closer really you can get the projector to the screen, the greater uh, quality image that you're going to get. Yeah, and obviously if we had the other one, <laughs> which is still up there, the poor thing, uh, but if we brought that up side by side here, that would probably put a little small image in here yes. but that's going to be very intense in bright it will, be, it it? will be very bright but obviously it's going to be it's, it's a magnifying glass isn't it it's yes. kind of focusing in and it's obviously very very close and less contam contamination uh, as far as the position of this is concerned bottom of the screen yep yep it tends to be obviously we can see we've set it up here so your image is here and your lens is pretty much level with the bottom of the image so it's obviously firing the image upwards which enables us then to get um, a projected image higher than the actual projector Okay, so let, let's have a look at the other one. Let's just kind of remeasure that because I forgot what we said that was a minute. That's going to be um, 29 inches away from there, isn't it? Yep. Approximately 29 in right. inches there. I'm just, um, I'll stick this one onto blank for a minute. Uh, that's just a mode that allows us to kind of go to black screen. So it's great if you're fiddling around with your computer during the sale or whatever. Then, of course, you can just put it onto blank so the client is not going to see what you're doing. Let's hit, let's hit that on. Brilliant. And now you can see that we've got the 50 inch images back. Just to double check it, yeah, it's 52 inches in fact, really, but I'll kind of do for now. And, but the difference in the position away from screen is, that's 119 in inches. That's quite a way, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, you might not have that room in a client's no. room as such. And obviously we've, got, we've set this at 50 inches or there or thereabouts. So you imagine if you then wanted to maybe go for 60 or 70 inches, you're then having to move the projector further and further back. Now, not every lounge or every building has the ability to have that much space to throw that kind of, um, that kind of size image. And that's where the flexibility of something like this comes in, that if we moved that back, right back to where that is, we'll suddenly then start filling six, seven, eight, nine, ten feet. And that's, that's the difference, really, and that's where the technology comes into it. Mm. We, we always sell it on a 60-inch size. That's what Debbie actually projects on, onto a wall, uh, and it's from there. She'll shrink it all, all down just on the, soft, the software to be able to sell to the client. That's why we've kind of chosen the 50 inches to give us a kind of a guide, whether we worked at a client's home or we're work, working in a kind of a closed envi environment. Um, the benefit that we do have with this one, though, of course, we do have that slight zoom. Uh, we can shrink, shrink that in just a little bit. Um, so we've got a little bit of a, a zoom difference there. There is a model that is, sli is slightly bigger than this one again, isn't it, with a better yeah. zoom fo the function? The next one up has, has got a bigger um, zoom um, function. So the ratio on this one is 1.9, whereas we do have them 1.5, so it would probably be about here. And it gives us the ability then to project somewhere from back here to get the same kind of image. But you're still not getting anywhere close to what the short throw will be. So is there an equa equation then that equates this to the size? Yeah, pretty much. If you look at a one-to-one -one ratio, for every one metre that you want to go wide, you go one metre back. Okay. So that will obviously give you a complete one-to-one. -one. So if we wanted a one metre image, we would position it to get one-to-one, -one, one metre back. So um, this, for instance, is 0 0.6 to 1. So for every metre that we are wide, we're only 60 centimetres away. Whereas that's 1.9 to 1. So for every metre we are wide, we're actually 1.9 metres back. So you can see you're 1.3 metres further back to get the same size image. And they can pretty much use that equation then when they're looking at buying the projector. Yes. Or actually where they're going to position it as where a starting they need to position point. It. It, yeah. um, there's, there's different ways, but if you can work out your width of your screen and you, can, you know roughly where you want to put the projector, you then look at the ratio. Or if you've got the ratio of the projector, you can work out what screen size you're going to get from what size. But we tend to kind of work it, as I say, that's 0.6. So we know it for, for every 60 centimetres you are back, 
you're going to get a one metre wide image. Mm -hmm. and, and even though we've got them on the kind of the, uh, the units here, if you're in a static location, pretty much a ceiling mounting is going to be the, st yeah. the standardisation, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so you can ceiling mount it. Um, obviously, then we would invert the image in the, uh, in the projector itself. Yeah. So then your projector would be up here and it would be projecting exactly the same image. But obviously, where we've got it table mounted projecting upwards on the ceiling, it would project downwards. Um, we all of often see things like back projection. Yep. Um, how much kind of light quality do we lose coming through the screen? Are there special screens for it as you well? You do buy a special um, rear projection screen. So it, it enables then, with, obviously with a normal screen surface, when you're projecting onto it, the backing stops the light from going through the projector and obviously that's where you get your reflected image. And it just works the opposite way around. On a rear projection, it allows the light to come onto the screen, but it stops the, the actual um, light going straight through the screen. So again, if you've got space behind the screen rather than in front, you can actually project from the back, but then you just need a rear projection screen. Because traditionally in the big AV theatres, everything was back projection, back isn't it? Because they yes. could completely black in case the background so they didn't get contamination coming through yeah. again. Yeah, so essentially we would have, you know, we would enclose the projector here so then you're feeding it through so you could actually have a complete black um, area so that you get in the maximum out of your projector. Okay, cool. Um, and they'll all work in the similar ways as far as ceiling mounting, inverting, yep. back projection. Those are all settings all that we've got going in All built in, in, in anyway. the actual units themselves. It's just an easy menu setting just to try and change it from inverted, ceiling mounted, ceiling mounting and inverted, and obviously your front, standard front projection. Right. Let's just throw both of those on for a minute. So we can see that we're working on pretty much a similar. Let's just uh, bring that back a little bit. So we can pretty much, we've got a similar width there, isn't it? It's pretty yep, much uh, right. kind of bang on with that. As far as the intensity is concerned, is there a difference in the illumination uh, because of the, contam the contamination of the ambient light? Yeah, I think you can see that this, uh, obviously the shorter throw is obviously giving a brighter image. Um, ignore the centre bit because obviously you're duplicating it, but pretty much you are getting a brighter image. Tell from, you what, if we just move that from, by there for a minute, even though it's going to do weird things. So, so you can see that it is a brighter image. Um, from your from your short to throw projector, it's not a lot though, is it? Because that's still very very it, good. It is very good. It. It's yeah, very very bright. It is very good. But it is. It, this just has that clarity a little bit more, isn't yes. it? It's got yeah. that little bit of shock. I think it's it. more. It, it, the clarity is there, but it is more about the flexibility of where where you can position the the units. Um, zoom. How much is the zoom important? Because this has quite a, a, a little zoom kind of uh, ability on the. Uh, the budget projector there, isn't it? Compared to this one here has no zoom facility, just the option to obviously switch it on, off or move it an yes. inch or two. Yeah, I think it's designed, um, essentially the, the shorter throw projectors were originally um, kind of brought into light for education. So with teachers standing at the front of the classrooms, Clearly, you can see there, if I'm looking at my class, that is shining straight in my eyes. Because that's coming from the one... Because it's coming from the one further back. Whereas the short throw, when we, do, when we have that one... one. Let's switch, switch, that on a minute. I'll switch that one off. Just switch into the blank mode. So that's all with it. now I'm talking to the same audience, but that is actually projecting straight past me. So essentially, that's where it came into, into its own for education, whether it be health and safety or whether it literally just be um, less shadowing. Um, that's why we started to go for shorter and shorter throw. Shadowing's um, a key thing though, isn't it? Because as soon as you step... Yes, as a, again, as a teacher, I have to kind of come around here before I'm starting to shadow my image. But I can do it here, but and you I'm can, not putting the whole, whole of my body, your body in body front. Yeah. Whereas obviously there, as soon as you step into, into that um, throw distance, you're obviously then starting to shadow the image, but also you, you get the light straight in your eyes. Brilliant. Colin, thanks very much. I thought that really cleared that up for me. But these are both budget ranges, isn't it, really? That's yes. an entry level of 400 odd pounds. Yeah. Um, and this is an entry level about 600? About 600. So literally for the 200 pound, you're paying roughly for the, for the lens technology uh, just to get closer to the, to the screen. In what I've kind of been discussing with you, you today, are you edging more towards a, wi a widescreen for the sales that I've been on about? Certainly with widescreen, as we said, you know, laptops are all coming widescreen, DVD players, Blu-ray players, they're all now widescreen. Even, um, you know, even using camera technology, it's more widescreen than anything else. So I think this is certainly the way forward. And then people are starting to edge to HD um, and beyond, which is all a widescreen format. So this, the, the XGA, the, the, the 4 by 3 format is really starting to die out a little bit now. Everyone is keying themselves more into widescreen. Brilliant. Um, and the last, uh, the last thing really, as far as the, if I've got a feed of a uh, VGA coming through and it's not a widescreen as well, is this still going to cope with it? It'll cope with it. It'll just compress it to how it, it should look. 
So essentially what you're doing here is if, you sh if you're showing a, a 4 by 3 image, literally it can't extend it height-wise, so it just it pulls it in width-wise. Will that distort the image? It won't. It, it, it will, literally, it will just blank the sides off, so you will still have a square image, but obviously it will just make it that much smaller within the panel that it's, that it's able to do. Brilliant. Thank you, Colin. No problem. Brilliant. So I'm Mark Cleggorn for Footage Training View. I hope you've enjoyed that quick film on using the projector and which one to choose. So we're l looking at the short throw or the standard throw with the, sim uh, the simple zoom.